Welcome, age of vintage society. May Questel was a natural talent, richly endowed with vocal creativity, a singer, comedian, and character actress described as a stunning personality that affected generations with her raw innovation. Her powerful vocal characterization made her a pioneer voice actor, especially with that remarkable role of Betty Boop's voice. Sadly, she's no longer with us, but talking about her brings back those pleasurable childhood cartoon memories. How May Questel became the sexiest symbol in animation. I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate your generous support on Patreon and your activity on the channel. These videos would not have been possible without you. Big thanks to those who watched the video until the end. Talking about May Questel reminds me a lot about growing up. Funnily enough, I still remember how as kids we gathered around the heavy 24-inch television set to catch a glimpse of the many Popeye animated films that I now know were partly created by this lady. As a female cartoon character, May is remarkable for who she is and what she symbolised in the industry, a Yiddish animated character and real-life Yiddish descendants. May would always be remembered as the voice of Betty Boop, plus the Olive Oil and Minnie Mouse, these three significant female animated characters of all time, and several others were creatively prepared by her vocals. You may not have seen May in person, or would you recognise her face if you happened to meet her by chance, simply because she was more in the background, unlike other famous Hollywood movie stars. But with her unique vocal strength, she was able to voice hundreds of cartoon characters. I also thought of her as someone very special, based on visual memories of her movies. So it did not come as a surprise when I met this astonishing lady several years back, in the latter part of her life. Do I hear you say her voice in Betty Boot was excellent? This historic scat-singing animation flapper with a big cranium and petite dress appeared first in 1930 in the briefly animated Dizzy Dishes, in which she deeply symbolised the Jewish origin of her makers. Her elongated career began as early as 17 years after she won a talent competition at the RKO Fordham Theatre in the Bronx. Critics who were privy to her activities say her mimicking of singer Helen Kane was so inspiring that Questel was contracted immediately by an agent, which later saw her performing as Kane's double in vaudeville. Some of the many famous characters that Questel mimicked included Fanny Bryce, Eddie Cantor, Marlena Dietrich, Mae West, and Maurice Chevalier. What about animals? She was also involved in animal mimicking voice, provided animal voice effects in many network radio programs. When the likes of Jackson Beck, Arnold Stang and Sid Raymond teamed up with May from the 1940s to the 1950s, the strong collaborative voice crew produced many of the most nourishing voices in Golden Age animations. Data available shows that Jack Mercer, Questel and Beck were credited for a series of over 200 Popeye animations produced specifically for television that would later be syndicated at the beginning of the 1960s. When animator Max Fleischer saw her representation, he was so enthralled that he did not hesitate to get her to offer the famous voice sound in Betty Boop. Recall that Fleischer hired Questel so she could be part of Betty Boop's voice. Sooner, her talent sold her out and she eventually took over the entire role and became the sole voice of the animated film character for about eight years, from that year until 1939. Almost everyone thought that Questel's legendary boop boop -a doop was more like that of Helen Kane's sound. A few said she was similar to the mischievous appeal of famous Clara Bow, which was Fleischer's real intention for drafting her in for the productions. With Fleischer, May was significantly in action for over 50 animated shorts, the highest record for all female actresses to date, including voicing Little Audrey. Margie Hines was the original voice of Boop until May Questel came into the picture. This Jewish actress from the Bronx made noteworthy improvement in Boop, and she is today credited for Boop's distinctive sound, streaked with a New York intonation. I grew up hearing what I now described as the wrong common belief that her voice has nothing to do with Esther Lee Jones, known as Baby Esther, or related black performers, even as it reflected jazz age culture. 
The truth is that there is a possibility that she was inspired by Helen Kane, who is a white Broadway idol. Although Kane tried a legal battle with Betty Boop's producer, it is also possible that Kane herself got inspiration from the same Esther. As soon as the Hayes Code became compulsory in 1934, Boop also shifted. Her cultural taste was limited too. The Yiddishisms in her cartoons disappeared and even her curly hair changed. As the years dragged by, it is only natural that her popularity would reduce. Despite her spirited efforts on TV, in films and comic strips, things continued a downward trend for May until she got a second chance and even bigger success. If you have heard the sound in Boop's cameo, who framed Roger Rabbit, you must have caught her voice in the latter days of her life. At this time, the merchandising gold rush exposed her globally more than her cartoon image did. The opportunity made her a retro classic and placed her among the most licensed personas in the history of entertainment. Though she has been identified as a feminist, hipster and LGBTQ figure, it never affected her cultural heritage. Hence the Betty Bluepedia platform stated that there's little doubt as to her Jewishness. Sadly, we also heard that May Questel was hit by the lowest point of Alzheimer's disease in the last years of her life, and that she could not recall vividly past events like those of her epic animations. Talking about May's condition before her demise, Jackson Beck, the famous Bluto voice in Paramount cartoons, responded to questions about the voice history of the East Coast Cartoon Studio by saying, There's one person who was there from the beginning, but she can't tell you anything. He was referring to the great May Questel, and had confirmed her rumoured condition at the time. Questel was indeed a great American actress born in 1908 in the Bronx, as May Questel to Simon and Frieda Questel. She was an innate talent that found herself in a family that didn't think showbiz was a nice career for their daughter. Young May was burning inside with obvious talent as she performed regularly for charity and community gatherings. After studying at Morris High School and proceeding to learn acting from the American Theatre Wing and the Theatre Guild, she was set for her dream career in the entertainment industry, but her orthodox Jewish parents would not allow her. Even when a juicy career opportunity came, both parents, including her grannies, stood against it and frustrated her out of the Theatre Guild school. But she did not give up on her dream, though her chance came when she almost thought her theatrical aspirations were over. It was the same talent that endeared her to a notable violin player, Misha Elman, who would introduce her to very important contacts that worked in her favour. While May was positioning her mind to take up a teaching career, some of her contacts, that were privy to her skill as a natural imitator, decided to put her in a Helen Kane impersonation challenge at the RKO Fordham Theatre, where the famous Kane was also performing. The contest became a game-changer for May, as she did not just participate, but emerged victorious in the competition. Even as an experienced teenager, May was believed to have privately observed Kane's performance before the contest started, and was able to perfectly mimic her act, and together with her natural enthusiasm, she got herself a contract with the RKO Vaudeville Trail, which also kick-started her professional career. Her entrance into stage performance at the time was mainly to imitate the singing style of famous singers like Ruth Etting and others, as I mentioned earlier. Described as the personality singer of personality songs, May was doing the act perfectly and attracting the attention of many. Not too long, the talent took her to radio as she made appearances on radio programmes. It was at this time that famous cartoon maker Max Fleischer spotted her and decided to make her the animated voice of his production, Helen Kane's voice look-alike that is today known as Betty Boop. Fleischer Studios, that took animation from the opposite side of a typical Disney production, was remarkable, because from 1929 to 1932, the studios created and circulated through Paramount Pictures a sequence of 42 black-and-white tall cartoons, which were the foremost animated talkies. So, when May Questel came on board, she joined the seventh animation known as Dizzy Dishes. The production had an uncredited side character put together by Max Fleischer and cartoonist Grim Natwick. May appeared as a singer in an unfastened mini-dress, with her garters having a look-see-out. Her appearance was amusing, lively and sexy, 
to say the obvious, she stole the show, and the star in her was born. The producer made her a real human voice, the first of such a woman character in a cartoon named Betty Boop. Soon she was leading the talk of tunes, and about two years after, May got her series, which was lively with up to 90 animations before 1939. Her popularity, of course, made her trademark boop boop ba doop catchwords of the energetic, liberated American woman of the jazz age. What about her stand as the famous sex symbol in animation? She occupied that spot and was dubbed in her signature tune, Queen of the Animated Screen, until Jessica Rabbit took over. May Questel's celebrated role in Betty Boop did not just bring her fame, it made Paramount cartoons the best in terms of voiced characterizations. When Jack Mercer, the famous Popeye voice, joined the crew, Fleischer cartoons featured top-quality voice tracks for an extended period, before other cartoon players from New York and Hollywood queued in. Critics say her ability to improvise helped her cartoons greatly, just like her magical singing talent. At some point, May included other male and female Paramount characters in her commut, voicing Olive Oil, Pudgy and others. She was married twice, first to Leo Balkin, and had two kids. Although Questa was ready to work and worked regularly, she never wanted to relocate from New York for some reason, including but not limited to her love for her family. And so at the time, Fleischer Studios shifted to Florida in the late 1930s, May stayed behind with her young family with Balkin in New York. Some said she took a break for this reason. She did very few productions for Paramount at the beginning of the 1940s. But as soon as the studio returned sometime in 1943, May got back her spot as its principal female actor, but this time with a strong alliance with Beck, Stang and Raymond. May's career was amazing, and she may have also lived a spectacular lifestyle. She made her talent essentially available on New York stage, in cartoons, commercials and radio, and did not mind the feature movies until producers shifted their attention to the East in her later years. Even as some said she retained her originality as a character by staying behind in the region. Many of Questel's songs were a major hit for fans, and more readily the Betty Boop character became a trendy commercial that incorporated everything from toys, candy and clothes to beauty products. The radio network programs and newspaper comic strips also followed the trend. May Questel was remarkably credited for an adaptation of The Good Ship Lollipop in her Betty Boop voice that got more than two million record sales for Decca in 1934, just as she displayed as a character in a live performance short subject movie known as Hollywood on Parade, number A8. All of these produced a huge profit for the Fleischer brothers and their parent studio, Paramount Pictures, but her mimicking also made a few people angry, especially Helen Kane, who was the background centre of her character talent that was never acknowledged. Kane's career climaxed in the late 1920s when she came up with famous cutie pie deliveries of Button Up Your Overcoat plus I Wanna Be Loved By You that had several boop boop ba doop exclamations signature. At the time she became a Broadway sensation but her career declined with the advent of sound production while she might have inspired the likes of May to start imitating her creation. Kane was practically aggrieved in 1934, the year she instituted a legal battle against the Fleischer brothers, requesting to be paid $250,000 as compensation because the cartoons, she claimed, had undermined her popularity and singing style. Making a case for his production, Fleischer argued that Betty Boop's idea was his imagination and nothing else, adding that five women had voiced the role at the time and that Questel was just one of them but critics agree that Questel's characterization took its root in Kane's talent. Some say that her entire career was an adaptation of Helen Kane's work through impersonation. Ironically, it was said that on the night of that historic contest, Kane had sent an autograph to her saying, to another Helen Kane. Whether Fleischer's studio wanted Betty Boop to appear Jewish, or simply adopted Yiddish kite for the fun of it, is still debatable, and the crew remained silent over that but they did allow her to boldly use the boop boop a doop tune for her creation. 
Questel continued with her Betty Boop voice until the animation ended, and she remained grateful to the Fleischer brothers and would not publicly accept ever copying Kane in all her works. On the contrary, a drama did play out when she sang the 1920s copy Chameleon Days in 1983 Woody Allen's artificial biopic Zelig. A closer look at the imitation 78 RPM record shows that the song is incorrectly attributed to Helen Kane. After several years of turning down Hollywood offers, Questel in 1961 featured as the crazy aunt, mother or grandmother and added the much-needed bravery to Jerry Lewis's movie It's Only Money that year. As an animated movie lover, the imagery of Mae Questel's talent is still fresh in my memory, from that finest bizarre old woman who draped the family cat as a donation in National Lampoon's Christmas Retreat, to that Woody Allen's omnipresent troublesome mother in Oedipus Rex, which was part of the 1989 film New York Stories. Questel stood out as a lasting pop culture legend with her voice. Though she died in 1998 from Alzheimer's disease-related complications, when she turned 89, her legacy lives on. Now you know whose voice enchanted your whole childhood, but do you really know who was the real Betty Boop? Let's find out from this video.